thanks to everyone, uh, particularly to GZF, to the Global Social Economy Forum to, uh, for organizing, uh, for all the efforts uh, throughout this event in cooperation with the uh, Mexican National Institute for Social Economy uh, in uh, providing this, uh, this virtual forum to meet, to travel around the world, uh, to, know, to better know and discover several experiences from several parts of our, of our world. And uh, today, particularly, we are going to discuss about uh, uh, how to promote the sustainable growth of the social economy around the world uh, with good practices from different countries, from different countries, uh, and different instruments uh, that are put in place uh, precisely to support on a structured basis uh, the growth and the creation of social economy enterprises. Um, I don't want to say much more because I think that what it is interesting is to hear our fantastic speakers, uh, the great speakers that we have today to discover from them, to learn from them. From them. So uh, without further ado, I will give the floor to Madame Elise Biret, if I am not wrong, if not correct me, the president of RESCAM, the network of social and solidarity economy in Cameroon. Uh, Madame Biret, c'est à vous. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me the privilege to be the first to speak uh, on this important panel. So, as has been said, I'm Elise Pierret. And um, I am from the network here in Cameroon, the National Network for the Social and Solidarity Economy. I am a member of the board of the uh, for promotion of the social and solidarity economy. So maybe I can tell you how we have established dialogue with the government. And I can also explain how we have set up several bodies to carry out advocacy in order to improve the legal and institutional framework for the social and solidarity economy in Cameroon. I can also tell you about the uh, changes that we have seen recently and the alliances that we have been able to set up. So we were set up in 2013 and we the aim was to work in partnership with the government This was not an easy task. There were many exchanges that were carried out and we had to prove that we were really following the right rationale without having, or we had to establish the right links with government and to establish the right channels. And it is for this reason that we started working with we have been working at three different levels we started working um, with or the network of other sse actors because we believed that it that we need strong bodies to lead the actions that we hope to carry out and then secondly the partnership approach that we established from the beginning with the government has been successful and we uh, we established alliances with other partners that provided support to our network our network rescam and so as for the support that we received as i was saying that's the first stage that we started with and we needed the tools uh, at the beginning. And so we supported the setup of a national um, mutuality and national health mutuality network in Cameroon. So we did this by, by holding several gatherings with different partners. And this meant that uh, Rena Muscam was set up. So this was just a health network a healthcare network initially and then on tw in 2018 this national network led to the creation of a national federation of the union social uh, union 
social and solidarity union in Cameroon. And this means that now we have been able to take part in uh, strengthening public policy, contributing to public policy in the area of social and solidarity economy. Above all, in terms of universal health care cover, uh, which was one of the main objectives for us, but also one of the it is one of the sustainable development goals. Following this, we also contributed to the setting up of a network of members of parliament, a an alliance of parliamentarians, members of parliament who were who supported SSE. It was important that we had networks of members of parliament because public policy in each of our countries needed to receive support, it needed to be strengthened. And and without this, uh, we would never be, we would never have reached the stage we're at now. So we raised awareness among members of parliament. We held many information sessions, briefings, and this meant that we were able to set up this network of partners, of members of parliament in 2018. And I think it was October or November 2018, and then the following March, everything was already in place. And this network has well, it really brought pressure to bear, and it has changed policy, changed legislation, is contributed to changes in legislation, and Thanks to this network, we've been able to carry out um, advocacy with other partners, and we have been able to we've been able to work with the France Afrique network, which has meant that we have been able to have a have the signing of a convention an agreement at ministerial level at national level so we have followed these approaches and in november 2018 we were lucky enough to sign a formal agreement with the minister in charge of the social and solidarity economy and this provided us with the chance to be key actors in establishing public policy with the government for us it was a great victory because it meant that we became key civil society partners for the government. We were recognized in our role as key partners across the country, across the whole of Cameroon. And uh, this has led to the decree that is in place at the moment. Several actions have been led, maybe not with the intensity that we would have liked, but we have indeed been lucky enough to uh, mobilize. We have mobilized with the Ministry for Social and Solidarity Economy. And in our municipalities, we've been able to implement measures on social and social solidarity economy. We've mobilized actions. We have set up links at local level. We have established a local dynamic which performs well in terms of SSE and we could say that this work would not have been possible 
if we had not made our initial efforts, we thought that we should est establish partnerships with other civil society actors, and they have helped us. And it has been intense work. It has been very difficult in Cameroon. We have worked, we've had to work with all the local authorities across the country so as to ensure that everybody can understand the importance of SSE so that we can reach out to grassroots actors. This has been intense work and we have been working with the Pan-African Institute for Development and they have their offices in Cameroon and they are helping us with interns who are carrying out work on the ground at grassroots level and we are working uh, with them. We have also, it's, uh, we're also working with consultants who are supporting us. We also have organizations, SSE organizations who we're working with at local level. So in some municipalities, in some town councils, the mayors are very much aware of what needs to be done. They have accepted that they really need to work with SSE actors in order to ensure that good performance is achieved. But we have been using, well, we've been using a similar approach so as to ensure that informal actors can move into the formal sector so that they can formalize the work that they carry out. And in that way, they can be part of the real economy. And uh, this has been possible only thanks to the collaboration, the alliance that we have set up with the government and also with the other uh, SSE platforms. So for example, the members of parliament have helped us incredibly. And now we have, we're opening, we're organizing fairs and events in the different, in the, in the departments of our country and the regions. And so we believe that these are, approaches are important to share. It's important to point out that it hasn't been easy, but that thanks to the partnerships with government and with other actors, we have indeed been able to make progress. Now that we have a formal agreement with the government, things are much easier. So now we have to wrap up. So as I was saying, I was just concluding. This is an approach that I really wanted to share with all of you. Thank you very much. I didn't say at the beginning, but I should point out that, well, I maybe didn't introduce myself. I am the Director of Social Economy Europe, which is a European network, which brings together actors across Europe in SSE. This is a network which, well, it's important to point out that we, oh, well, linking in with what we just heard, this is, this brings together, it's a federation of several different organizations across Europe. Um, so it's similar to the African network that we were just hearing about. We've got the Spanish network, we've got the Portuguese network, and uh, many others. So we bring together the different fed national federations <clears throat> and it's similar to what we were just hearing so we have a similar experience here what we try to do in europe is to bring together all of the different actors work on shared objectives and we cannot pass on our message alone. We know that we need the help of partners. And now this is very uh, interesting. So we've got the mutuals, 
needles are a tool for guaranteeing access to healthcare for everybody. And the history of mutuals is, well, uh, across the whole of Europe, before universal healthcare was offered by the state, by governments, these mutuals uh, said that they were going to take care of each other, take care of their own work together, show solidarity, and provide social protection uh, together in a joint manner. So this is very interesting. and. Um, And we have uh, an alliance of members of the European Parliament. So I can see many similarities here. I can see lots of good experiences that we can learn from. So now, I'm, as I was saying, I'm going to give the floor to the director of the regional chamber. And she is going to tell us um, about how we can established alliances. So over to you, Madam. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you, Pierrette. Your presentation is very interesting. My name is Hajek Kizami. I'm the director of the Regional Chamber for Social and Solidarity Economy in de France. I'm going to talk about a project called Visa. We've organized it with our Belgian counterparts but we're also working on across the uh, SSC network in Belgium. So the idea is how do we look at the social impact? And we're also working with CRES, which is an organization in other fronts, which is a grassroots movement that is taking social responsibility to the heads of businesses so that we can work together and find a way of uh, really changing the classic economic model, which is based on profit in the past. So what we're looking at is how to assess imp social impact. What is social impact? Well, it's an approach, essentially, that is about better documenting and communicating the effects of an organization. It uh, looks at the social, but also economic, local environmental issues. It's the some of the effects that are produced by an organization that sometimes are only seen in the long term. So SSE enterprises uh, essentially work on a local scale in a multi-partner ecosystem where impacts are sometimes far too isolated. So the VIS project is trying to promote the contribution of SSE enterprises so that we can help with the dynamic of local uh, regions for the well-being of local inhabitants. So we want a qualitative tool that is not only quantitative. So if we wanted to summarize our approach, therefore, I think that we could say that we study the work carried out by SSC Enterprise is both in their connections with others, but also internally and their connection to the environment. So that in a nutshell is what we do through our network. Now Visa is a project that has been up and running for four years. We are coordinated by the two territorial networks. So we're talking about CRES, which is the chamber for our region and CRES equivalent in Belgium. So we support, we've been around for four years, we support 21 different partners. And we also work on a cross-border nature between France and Belgium. We help uh, different companies in solidarity enterprises, also job placement schemes, seeking partners for financing, but also with university partners because we have the research into action approach. So we have all of these partners, we have the finances, and over the last four years, we have been developing an approach, approach that cuts across four different areas. So it's a four-step approach, therefore. Uh, obviously, we only have a few minutes today, but it's four years of discussions between us so that we can um, evaluate four different areas. And the first area is the diagnostic and the definition of this idea of assessment, working with SSE enterprises, getting to know them, and 
finding out from them what assessment or evaluation actually means, not just working on the structure, but actually talking to these people and specifically drilling down and understanding what the specific details are about. So we've worked with enterprises. Now, obviously, enterprise in the European sense of the term, we're talking about enterprises, we're talking about their employers. And then what we did is we sat down and uh, created some data collection tools, data collection tools that would be better adapted to our purposes. So we collected all these data, and in this way, we could then fully analyze the situation of these enterprises, both what's happening on the ground, but also what's happening in terms of recipients, uh, the neighborhoods, the enterprises, employers, all the different stakeholders. So it's a very specific approach and it has allowed us to shed light on various different areas. First of all, it is a political approach because it is driven by and for SSC. So it's not a neutral method. Our goal was to demonstrate the non-monetary benefits of this type of system. Secondly, it's a co-constructed approach with stakeholders. It's very important that we bear this in mind. We don't want uh, an assessment grid, but we're not carrying out some kind of external scrutiny. No, we want all the stakeholders to be involved. If we don't have the grassroots stakeholders involved, then we cannot create this kind of SSC uh, network. Also, there's a lot of uh, mutual cooperation here. And through this, we have a strategic approach of ongoing development. We need to understand that public policy makers, that investors also need to be on board. So it needs to be a tool that's not one off, but works over time. Also, it's a made to measure approach. We need to have the enterprises, we need the different stakeholders working together. And finally, it's a holistic approach. So we're not just simply uh, producing a, a simple reading of the outcomes. I did run through this very quickly, but this is basically what we're doing at the Visa project. So you can take a look at the website. It's on the slide. It has been translated into English. So if you want to take a look what we've done here in France with our Belgian colleagues, we have uh, released publications and we have the website, the www.projectvsproject.eu. So I encourage you to take a look. Thank you very much, Ajia. It's a wonderful project. We are fully aware of it. In fact, Chris, in France uh, has worked along us and inside us. And in fact, we did work together at the um, forum in Bilbao uh, a couple of years ago. And I do believe that it's very important that we can measure metrics beyond GDP, job employment figures, that we need to be able to measure the social impact of SSC. And I think that these different initiatives are very important. A lot of money has been invested, but we need to look at social inclusion, about job placement. We need to look at uh, the equality of women, gender equality. So I think it's very important that we raise some awareness amongst local enterprises, but also that we talk to the policymaking mechanisms, institutions. Yes, I agree entirely. We need to assess the situation so that we can convince policymakers. We don't. We need to go beyond this and bring everybody on board. Thank you very much. Now we're going to hear from Mr. Patrice Loves. He's not actually with us, but he has sent us a video. Mr. Loves represents the uh, SSE group of Benin, and he's going to talk about the work that they're doing in Benin in this video. Good morning, everybody. In the framework of the G. CEF Forum for 2020, I'm going to present the initiative of the Benin SSE Group. A presentation of the Benin SSE Group. So 
So we were set up originally on 30th of December 2008. Now we have uh, 11 member organizations, one NGO working for us, uh, which is a federation of producers. And we also work alongside uh, women groups. Our head office is in Boikon in Kotonou Betan. We are members of various different organizations. We have found a member of the RAESS in 2012 in Morocco. We are an associate member of GSEF since July 2019. Now let's take a look at some information about myself, the presenter of this initiative. I am Patrice Loves. I am a development sociologue, PhD in uh, business administration, director general of CBDIBA ONG, president of the Benin Group for SSC and president of the Loves Foundation. I shall now present the initiative. The title of our initiative is Organizing cooperatives and providing support to poorer women in the town of Boycon for the Benin Group, or for the SSC and for the Town Council of Boycon. What are the thematic pillars of our initiative? The social and solidarity economy and the questions of inclusion, social cohesion, culture and migration. Then now let's take a look at the sub-themes of our initiative. We are working on the areas of social finance, social banking, social investment, the social issues, the way in which the social and solidarity economy tackles the questions of inclusion, migration, and social cohesion. Next, the dialogue between SSC and governments building partnerships and networks as means to influence policy. The objectives of our initiative. We aim to create at least 50 cooperatives per district with at least 10 members. We want to identify who poorer women are in their districts. We want to then organize awareness raising initiatives and we want to educate people to form cooperatives. You want to set up preparatory offices, hold general assemblies, form membership bodies, you want to identify the needs of poor women in the cooperatives and in their districts. Also training in the management of uh, money-making activities, so about how to uh, uh, gain access to loans. We want to identify money-making activities so that people can gain certain profitability. We want to identify technical and financial techniques, mobilize the different measures. We need follow-up, support, monitoring, and assessment in mid-term stages of projects. And we want also a definitive assessment and we want to measure the economic and social impacts after 12 months. So who are our partners in the cooperation framework? Well, first we have the Town Council of Boycon. We also have the leaders of the two districts, districts one and two in Boycon. Also, we have the CDBI a, ONG, the Benin <clears throat> Social and Solidarity Economy Group, social and professional groups, and technical and financial partners. Now, let's take a look at our cooperation framework. The Benin SSE Group is going to identify poorer women in each of their districts and will provide expertise on organization and the management of cooperatives. The other group, the CBDIBA, is going to provide the material resources so that they can furnish their offices, the necessary agents so they can manage the initiative, and the town council of Boricon is going to provide all the financial support so that they can have access to low interest loans. Also, we have social and professional organizations that are going to provide practical experience on the ground, technical and financial partners who will contribute to the technical and financial strengthening of the initiatives. And we are also going 
to work through the implementation of initiative so that the financial partners can be sought so that they can provide financial support to the functioning of this initiative. So what are the expected results? We want to have 50 cooperatives per district. We want a federation of cooperatives to be set up. The members of these cooperatives need to be well, trade, uh, well trained. We need a partnership with technical and financial partners. The necessary names need to be set up. We need to them past these initiatives. We need midterm assessments as well. And a final impact study. Conclusion, therefore, in general terms, the setting up of this initiative will strengthen SSE in the town of Boycon. We're going to help poorer women become independent. We will help in the fight against poverty. We're going to contribute effectively to protecting our environment. We're going to strengthen cooperation between the Benin SSE group and local government in Boycon. This is going to lead to sustainable local development, development based on the town of Boycon. Long live social and solidarity economy. Long live the town of Boycon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrice Loves, for that uh, video message. And for your interesting conclusion, long live the social and solidarity economy. Long live the town of Boycon. Uh, she's a visiting fellow uh, at the Hazel Knight Institute for Public Policy uh, at the University of Liverpool. And she will present, uh, she will talk to us about uh, designing social investment and support for the social economy uh, by the social economy, lessons learned uh, from the fantastic city of Liverpool. So, Mrs. Heap, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Victor, and thank you to the other speakers. I, I, I think you're going to hear some familiar themes coming through in my talk as well um, from what we've heard already. Um, so my name is Helen Heap. I am a social investor and also a visiting fellow at the University of Liverpool. And I'm going to talk to you today about um, an initiative that we're calling Kindred. Um, next slide, please. Um, so Kindred is a, a, an innovative, locally owned vehicle um, which aims to grow the social economy across the Liverpool city region, which is part of the north of uh, the United Kingdom. And we're going to do that by supporting socially trading organisations through investment, uh, partnership, other support. Uh, the next slide, please. So Kindred has three main objectives. Um, first of all, we're looking to pool money from both national and local funders, and that will be combined with non-financial support, which will be tailored to enable the growth and the greater social impact of those socially trading organizations in the Liverpool city region. Secondly, we're looking to actively engage with local individuals and communities who have their own ideas to generate community wealth, but they may not yet be formalized as companies or as businesses. They may have ideas, they may have initiatives, uh, but they may need some support to bring them to market and to get themselves organized in a way uh, that enables them to do that. And then finally, um, we are looking to increase the sustainability of those socially trading organizations by facilitating community asset transfers between the public sector and the social economy. Uh, we have quite a number of assets that currently sit within the public sector, uh, which aren't being utilized effectively, where we know that community involvement could significantly increase the, um, the impact and the, the productivity of those assets. Uh, so we're looking to help transfer those from the public sector to the social economy. Next slide, please. So as we've heard from uh, other speakers already today, um, there, there, are, there needs to be a lot of cooperation from a lot of different groups in order to bring these sort of initiatives together. And Kindred is no different. So Kindred uh, started as um, a, a conversation between two social uh, activists, if you like, um, and 
they brought their networks together, very different networks. So um, I was one of those. So, so I brought social investment and uh, social economy networks together. And um, a, a creative economist brought some very deep um, social economy networks uh, together as well. And um, a conversation there just, just sparked together to say, what's happening at the moment isn't working and we need to do things differently. So two individuals, but two individuals are not going to have the power or the influence within the local ecostructure to actually make change happen. So we brought in to, to the, um, into the team a national funder. So Power to Change is a, a national grant funder in the United Kingdom. And they are very well respected and very well regarded throughout the country. And they had already done a lot of activity in the Liverpool city region uh, and, and were well respected for doing so. Uh, but we realized that we needed support to incubate the idea and to bring the idea to fruition, uh, which was from somebody that was outside the region, but who was respected. Uh, and so that's why Power to Change was brought on board. And then finally, um, um, we needed the support of the local political leadership and the local um, uh, civil economy, civil service, if you like. So um, we have regional government in the United Kingdom. So we brought in the uh, Liverpool City Region Combined Authority and the Metro Mayor of Liverpool City Region. Um, and they became key players in, uh, in, in supporting the idea and helping us to bring to fruition. Next slide, please. So just a very brief timeline. I'm not going to go through this uh, blow by blow. But um, as I mentioned, the, um, the consortium was brought together in 2019, in February 2019. But before that, there'd been a lot of work been done um, uh, by the University of Liverpool looking to research the social economy and to understand how many people were out there in the social economy, what they were doing, uh, where they had impact and uh, where there were gaps in the social economy. And so there were a couple of pieces of research written by the, the um, University of Liverpool that really formed a very strong baseline and um, um, enabled us to be very clear about the evidence that we had um, for what was needed and where the gaps were within the social economy. Um, Power to Change came along and uh, they brought the, the structure and uh, project management skills uh, to, enable the, uh, to, to, to enable Kindred to get up and running. Um, and uh, once the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority came as partners, uh, we then set up what we call a community reference group. So there was a group of um, very se senior experienced social economy actors who came along as a kind of like an advisory board. Um, and we were able to, uh, to test a lot of the ideas that we had for Kindred with them as players in the social economy uh, where um, they would advise us as to whether or not we were on the right track. Um, and then from January of this year, we started to engage with over 150 socially trading organizations from all parts of the Liverpool city region and they too started to collaborate with the, um, the design of Kindred. So we held a number of consultation sessions across the region uh, where we were asking some quite specific questions about uh, social investment, about the kind of support the organizations were looking for, uh, what they needed um, in terms of property and assets uh, and, and those sort of questions. So the, the social economy organizations were involved in the, the design of Kindred right from the very start, and they remain so to this day. Um, so in October of last year, the uh, Metro Mayor of Liverpool City Region uh, announced his support in principle for Kindred. And then in uh, June of this year, uh, we had um, a formal approval of uh, five and a half million pounds of uh, funding from the combined authority and uh, power to change our co-sponsor co also added in a million pounds. So uh, we have six and a half million pounds of money to invest through uh, social investment and through support initiatives uh, for social organizations in the Liverpool city region. Final slide, please. 
So what have we learned in the process? We're still up and uh, we're still in the process of designing this. So um, we have set Kindred up as a community interest company, um, and uh, we are um, delivering some services, uh, particularly in relation to COVID-19. We're offering support to socially trading organisations on the ground, actively as as part of the local initiative uh, to uh, to help out with the COVID situation. Uh, but we're not yet fully up and running in terms of the full delivery program, uh, but we're expecting that to happen uh, from the first quarter of next year. Uh, but we have, I think, learned some very uh, important lessons along the way, and um, I'd like to share those with you now. So the first thing is the importance of having evidence and uh, a well-researched local market. Um, we would not have been able to convince the combined authority that um, we, uh, we needed specific uh, tailored resource that is different from the business support that is offered more broadly in the combined authority if we did not have the research and the evidence base uh, that we, um, we, we provided. Secondly, as has also been mentioned by other speakers today, the social economy needs a credible voice and a seat around the tables for local policy making. And once we put together that research and the evidence base, that was then the key to us getting our feet around those key tables. So in the Liverpool city region, we've been instrumental in forming um, the local industrial strategy. Um, and we're also participants in a number of groups that have been set up by the Metro mayor who are specifically designed to influence policy making. Uh, and, uh, and so that now means that the, the social economy has a much stronger voice in the Liverpool City region than has previously been the case. Um, you need to be a core part of the solution. Um, and so by articulating what Kindred specifically can do and what the social economy more widely can do to help solve the more um, um, generic problems within the regional economy, um, that also gives us credibility and helps to um, to build relationships with the uh, the local government and uh, and, and local economy, uh, in that we're 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 helping to solve problems for them. We're not part of a problem; we are part of the solution. Most importantly, do not accept the usual way of doing things. Um, I think it's often said: if you do things the same way you've always done, then you'll get the results that you've always done. Uh, and we've made this point very strongly that if you need uh, if you're looking for different outcomes, then you need to do things differently. And um, we, uh, with Kindred, we are we're, we're trying a number of different things in relation to the way the money is shaped, the way support is provided, uh, and how how we deliver uh, amongst our social economy organisations. And then finally, um, again, has been mentioned several times already today, the importance of collaborating and co-developing solutions. Do not do things to the social economy, do things with the social economy where the social economy are designing solutions to problems that they know better than anybody else. And that is absolutely critical. Um, so with Kindred, we think we have a vehicle uh, which is, is gonna be doing some very, very interesting things throughout 2021. Um, we, um, we are confident that we've got some um, innovative solutions and uh, we look forward to sharing some of the outcomes of those with you in GSEF 2021. Um, so thank you very much, Victor, and um, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much, Helen. Uh, and and uh, and indeed, I mean, I think that your uh, that the instrument that you have created at Kindred is a solution to a barrier that social economy enterprises face all over the place, which is access to, to funds. Very brief, but I think that is an interesting reflection. Uh, uh, social economy is contributing to many of the objectives, uh, for instance, right now, for the recovery of our societies and economies. Uh, we contribute to safe jobs and enterprises through workers buyouts. Uh, we promote community development through collective entrepreneurship, uh, which is much more resilient and, uh, and much more equalitarian than individual entrepreneurship, which is not bad, but is by nature less resilient individually we are atomized we are less we are less powerful we are a driver of the green transition through renewable energy through renewable energies uh, but also through the circular economy 
um, we provide social protection for a non-for-profit or limited profitability uh, perspective, obsessed with the service, obsessed with uh, giving a, a, a good service to the communities in which we operate and that we serve, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, the reality is that, for instance, in the framework of the jungle plan of the of the European uh, Fund for Strategic Investments uh, that the European Commission had in the last mandate, we are just two percent of the total investment. So we represent 10% of the GDP almost, but we are only 2%, not all, not, not of the total investment, 2% of the projects that were founded, less in terms of real investment. So there is a huge, uh, there is a huge barrier. And uh, one of the reasons for this barrier is the size of our enterprises. And that's why we need intermediaries and we need organizations like Kindred. In, for instance, Italy, they have a mutualistic fund of the social economy. At, and any time that a social economy company closes, the social capital of these enterprise goes to the mutualistic fund to create new companies. This is a very interesting, for instance, uh, legislative uh, uh, legislative experience, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I totally agree. Our way is different. Uh, our way of creating things is in a mutualistic, cooperative way. That's how we do things. And uh, because of our size, and we are part of the solutions to big back. We are definitely at the center to build back better our societies. Uh, but for many reasons, we are excluded from may, from very big recovery and investment instruments. And that's a problem that we need to solve through uh, intermediaries, through collaboration with intermediaries as the one that was just uh, presented by Helen. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for this, uh, for this experience. Et maintenant, on va donner la parole à Madame Cady Samba. Uh, Next, we will be hearing from Madame Cady Samba. She's the director for supervision of SSC for the Senegalese Ministry for Microfinance and SSC. She's going to talk about the promotion of SSC in Senegal. Madame Samba, all yours. Thank you. Greetings, everybody. It's a great privilege to take part in this event. So, uh, I am the director of our network of SSC, so I can tell you a bit about the the objectives, and I can give you a, uh, an overview of the situation of SSC in Senegal. So, we what we notice is that there is a strong political will in Senegal, a strong political will to achieve. SSC. The President of the Republic considers the social and solidarity economy to be one of the main um, main key points to focus on at the moment. So the idea is that is to achieve a society that shows solidarity and rule of law. So we have strong support from the highest level. We have a ministry that has been set up in charge of SSE, and they have established, they have defined a national strategy for SSE, and, um, and so we can really see that things are operational on the ground. We have a national strategy, and we are also sharing reflections on a, a bill, a draft law to guide SSE. Another key point is that we have many members joining us. We have lots of people joining the movement. There are many different actors who are leading actions to promote development, to promote SSE. I can give you just a few examples. So in November 2019, we organized a fair on SSE, bringing together many different stakeholders, and it was an opportunity for strong mobilization among all of the actors in the sector. And so this is one of the first uh, activities, and it really shows the commitment. It shows that so many, it shows the great commitment and dedication of many actors in coming together and joining forces. And 
in all of the activities in we um, we have seen so many actions being led and um, and members have come together with support of the government. So this is a sector which is not very well, or which was not very well organized, which was unknown at the beginning, but so much hard work has been done and financing uh, and budgets have been now put together. We have a financing line, a budget line, um, which is uh, decentralized financing. And then in terms of COVID-19, the ministry has provided support for uh, actors on the ground with uh, subsidies, cash transfers, and for those who have been uh, most impacted by COVID-19. So in the ministry, if we can move on to or if we have to move on to the next point, we can see that um, we have looked at how to promote correctly equity in Senegal, and we looked uh, with the ministry at what needed to be done. So we uh, did a stop taking exercise looking at national statistics. We looked at the weight that SSE can have in the economy, and we wanted to um, have a uh, we wanted to have reference points, so that's why we have this ANSD exercise, which is a uh, referencing uh, uh, stock taking exercise. So once we uh, did that, we tried to look at the degree to which SSE actors are contributing to society. We also saw that uh, we looked at the diversity of different actors, so such great variety and different institutions and different ministries are in touch with the grassroots actors. Uh, but we wanted to actually understand how all of this worked. We wanted to gain an overview, understand what strategy we could implement so as to ensure that SSE could be as uh, could make the best contribution possible. Once we had done our, once we had clearly taken stock, we needed to bring in a regulatory framework. And so we started to work on a law to guide SSE. And so this really allowed us to uh, understand the limits, understand the horizons that we could reach. We looked at how we can come together to develop this sector. And the this law uh, sought to provide responses. One other issue was that we had to understand who the actors really were. So we had to do a census. Uh, we had to do a census, as it were, and to understand who everybody was really and the ways in which they were working. We there was so it was so scattered. The 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 sector was so spread over several different areas, several different um, areas of production. So just in terms of livestock, we have so many different actors, many different associations, lots of different networks of farmers, producers, breeders of livestock. And so we had to understand all of this. And then the uh, we, we really needed someone to approach an interlocutor to speak to so that we could pass on our concerns. And so we we try to ensure that dialogue could be as relevant as possible. Then another element is that we try to carry out a mapping exercise of the different actors to understand who is doing what, where they're doing it, and how. 
they're doing it. So this was our census exercise to map out the different actors. And then the ministry is now in a reflection phase, looking at how mechanisms can be brought in. And one of these first mechanisms that is being considered is support for actors. So uh, we need a community economic, a community dynamic for the economy. We need to reach down to the lowest levels, to the grassroots. And another unique aspect of Senegal and other underdeveloped countries is the heavy role played by the informal sector. This is a niche of actors within society and they need support. Uh, the informal economy needs support so that we can ensure that these informal actors within the economy can formalize the work that they do. And in this way, they can contribute to development on the whole for the entire country. But this can only be done with the support of local governments and local authorities. We need the state, we need local government to provide support for this. And we need um, the correct structure. Now, in this, one fundamental point is providing access to financing. We have a number of tools that we're putting in place now, and we need to ensure that we have budget lines which are adapted to the needs of actors on the ground. Sometimes we need to ensure, well, we have lots of lines of financing that are being considered in this way now, so that people, so that we can collectively look at the needs. Another element which we need is that we need to provide incentives for the sector. We need to so we need to ensure that we come together with the different cooperatives. We need to ensure that the initiatives are more widespread. We need a law to, we need legal instruments to support social and solidarity actors. And we need to encourage the right framework. In this way, we can ensure that the sustainability in the long term of these activities. Another element is to encourage um, the right participation, private participation. And so what does this mean? This means individuals should come together and should provide the right financing. And so this is the case of several foundations. So we have to, we have to ensure that private individuals, private actors are working correctly. And in this way, we can provide the right frame, framework. We can channel the, uh, we can channel the efforts in the right direction. So within these, uh, if we move on to the next slide, then 
we can see that there are some things that really need to be taken into account, and that is improving governance, better governance. So, how can we have uh, policies which are implemented with good governance in mind? And we, and so how have we been looking at this? Well, the state has been taking initiatives, and we have the National Council for SSE, which has, uh, which gives guidance. It has many of the main officials from the government involved. It provides the right framework. It brings together different actors and stakeholders, those at the lowest level and at the highest level. And and they are the ones who are implementing the right policies. We need uh, we need to stimulate reflections so as to provide the right visibility for the actions that are being carried out, to stimulate research to ensure that the right resources are invested, while also establishing partnerships. As for the grassroots level, you can see that there are, we have um, a, an agreement framework which provides follow-up. And this means that we can trace, we can follow everything that is done in the uh, sector. And uh, information can go from the lowest level to the highest level and vice versa. It is a good channel of communication and it ensures that we can define the right policies. It ensures that um, policy can, that the communities at the lowest level can take ownership of public policy. So specific, I hope I've uh, given you a good overview of the specific points of what we're seeing in Senegal. And we can see that really government is fully involved uh, in the SSE sector in Senegal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Samba. Very, uh, very interesting. I think that we can also uh, uh, we can also stress that there are some elements that are being repeated in different that are being repeated in the different interventions. No, uh, uh, the need of financial and non-financial support, of capacity building for the social economy, the need of federating, uh, which has been present in all the in all the in all the speeches of uh, uh, make it federate to make our voices heard, uh, to be united in diversity, diversity of legal forms, union of values, people before profit, participation, democracy, and reinvestment uh, of most profits, and then also the need to measure. Uh, the economic and the social contribution of the social economy. Uh, so elements that have been present uh, in all the interventions till now. And precisely now, we will move uh, to our last speaker of the day, uh, which is Mrs. Astrid Kak, Senior Policy Advisor on International Affairs at the province of, at the province of Non-Brabant in the Netherlands, uh, that will present to us, uh, sorry for my pronunciation, my Dutch pronunciation, I live in Brussels, but my Dutch is terrible, uh, the Brabant uh, Outcomes Round. Uh, so Astrid, the floor is yours. Thank you, thanks a lot. And thanks a lot for having me on this very interesting uh, session. And I would like to tell you more about the Brabant Outcomes Fund. And as uh, was just said, I will also touch some elements that were already discussed before, but I think repetition is not a problem. So um, next slide, please. Um, this is a story in a session about good practices. And I will tell you the positive things about the practice that I'm dealing with, the Brabant Outcomes Fund, but I will also mention a little bit the negative side or the downside or the things that were not going as expected, because I think that is also important to talk about. And the Brabant Outcomes Fund, or the BOF, as we know, as we call it, uh, was set up because I, um, as a regional uh, policy advisor, I realized that uh, social economy, social enterprises, social initiatives, 
um, have a very good way of showing examples of how to find solutions for our societal challenges. And um, I had a lot of conversations with them and to better understand what kind of challenges they have to scale their impact, because we need more impact of them to, to solve our challenges in society. And actually they tell me, also I did uh, research, uh, that most of the time the challenges that they face are connecting, are connecting with the system that we as a regional government build. So I was actually happy to hear that because when we are part of the problem, we can also be part of the solution. So they mentioned things like um, we need uh, capital to scale, but the capital that we need is a little bit scattered between the, the uh, public and the private sector. We uh, want you to look more broad, not only at financial gains, but of course also at social and ecological impact that we create. And also a very huge challenge, of course, is the silos that we work in, not only within the government, but also the silos between uh, social, of, uh, between a public and private sector. So uh, next slide, please. I was thinking we have to build a kind of methodology to force public and private sector to work together and to really cooperate and understand each other better. And I came across the social impact bonds and was really um, amazed by that kind of uh, methodology where we, I don't know if you know it, where we have uh, investors, uh, private investors up front who uh, invest in social enterprises. And by the time these social enterprises create impact or results as was discussed before the investment, then the government will pay back the money to the private investor. And to do it like this, you really share risks and benefits between public and private sector, and you can really steer towards societal impact. Um, but I was also uh, a little bit confused about the fact that most of these social impact bonds are only paying for financial savings. That means that there is not really a big focus on societal impact. So I thought, can we um, tweak it a little bit to make it more focusing on societal impact and therefore pay also for that impact? And one of the things that we also did, uh, and I heard it before in the presentations of you, that we give also a loud voice to the beneficiaries of these enterprises to better understand what do they really like about the impact that these social enterprises create. And for us as a regional government, that is very innovative because we normally think, okay, here is the money, go do your things, good luck. We just, uh, we just uh, hope that everything will uh, turn out well, but we never really talk to the citizens to understand better the impact of the things that we uh, do. And another thing that we really focused on was um, the implementations of the learning inside the organization. Because what you see in regular social impact bonds is that intermediaries are hired to, uh, to set up this kind of bonds. But by the time these intermediaries are going to another project, all the knowledge and the learnings are disappearing. So that's why I set up the fund to create several social impact bonds um, together with a couple of my colleagues. And we really tried to do it ourselves. We had, of course, um, experts um, also helping us, but we also really wanted to understand better how to do it. Next slide. And I don't want to really go into this slide with a lot of words, but I just want to show you that it was a rather bumpy road, but we succeed to uh, get money for uh, around 1 million euros to invest in four enterprises and make contracts with them. Um, about social and ecological uh, impact besides financial um, a, a financial scalable business case. So um, 
that is rather uh, positive. And also uh, we signed these contracts uh, after the summer last year, and now the uh, enterprises are in their execution process. Of course, COVID is, is giving some uh, headaches, but we are still going in the right direction, I think. And also, and everything actually looked very bright and the future was open and I thought, okay, let's do it. We are going to a next investment round. Next slide. And so that, and then they uh, also give me the permission to do a next investment round to set it up. But the political, political situation in my region completely changed. New politicians uh, were, uh, uh, were sitting in the coalition and where my former politicians were really focusing on social, uh, on the social side and really looking at um, trying to create new ways of financing and, and, and they really understand what is impact and how to steer as a region. The new politicians are more looking at how can we use our money effective? Uh, how can we really grow enterprises and enterprises in a broad sense? And um, and they they use words like, okay, uh, we have to make sure that all the citizens are happy, but it is not mainly the task of the regional government. It's more the task for the local governments. And this gives me, uh, a lot of challenges because I need to tweak my story also of the Brabant Outcomes Fund in order for them to understand it more better. And um, there was one thing that I was happy with, with this new coalition, because I, I am convinced that if we look only at the social enterprises, we cannot solve our societal challenges. We need also the involvement of the more regular businesses they need to understand better how to um, how to um, how to work more social and more sustainable more uh, create more ecological impact so i thought if i can um, set up the fund in a more entrepreneurial way and more in a way that also traditional investors would understand it, like banks and pension funds, because also we need that money. We need more money. We need also the more traditional uh, investors to participate in this kind of instruments. So next slide, please. And therefore, I set up a mix of uh, uh, funding possibilities, loans and equity, and work capital. And work capital works like I just described, like a social impact bond. So you pay for results as a government, but the loans and equity also have an outcome, uh, are outcomes based because you can only get loans or equity once you can prove that with the money you improve, you create more positive impact on social and ecological um, uh, topics. And it can be inside your business, maybe you improve your uh, the way you work as a business to be more sustainable, to be more green, or it can be that you create more positive impact in society. And what I see is that um, uh, the more traditional investors are really interested in this because also they see, especially after COVID, that they need to invest in a different way. So, so far, so good. I am working on this, setting it up. It is not yet uh, agreed upon in my organization. And that is also the downside of it because I realized that this is so new and the politicians are also so new that they don't really understand what we are doing over here and how they can play a role. So maybe next slide, I think that will help. The downside is that um, uh, I, I, I find myself fighting the system of my own organization to make them understand why we have to implement the Brabant Outcomes Fund in the organization. And it cost me a lot of energy and frustration. And while outside all the, the uh, 
the collaborators are enthusiastic and they want to do it inside my organization there is a lot of reluctance and uh, next slide and um no previous one <laughs> No, it doesn't matter. And it is all it is all about um, uh, things like um, we we still don't break we didn't break down the silos in our organization. It's very very difficult. But I don't give up. I just continue. But I also thought, and that is a lesson learned. Like next slide, that sometimes scaling is making things smaller. So I decide to not focus too much on the system of my organization, but also turn myself and look more to my local situation where there is a lot of things are going on. I just moved five months ago to a very rural area close to the sea. And there is a lot, a lot of challenges are over here. And also my skills and knowledge and experience are needed over here as well. So I. I decide that I will dedicate also my energy over there to uh, to uh, to stay um, still with energy to fight the system in my own organization. And I think that is what we were all saying in our presentations. It is about the balance between the top-down system and the local initiatives and the energy and the good practices over there. And we have to combine it and we have to collaborate, but we also have to uh, make sure that we, um, that we don't lose our energy and we need each other to really change that system. That was it. Thanks a lot. I, am, uh, I liked a lot the end. I like everything, but particularly, I mean, this thing about, uh, uh, I mean, indeed, fighting is, uh, we all we all have our fights, fighting is tiring, and uh, and indeed, it's easier to do it uh, together and collectively, and uh, and uh, fighting is a need, it makes things better, but also we need to measure what energy is and not, and not, uh, and not, yeah, not, uh, because if not, fights are uh, totally unsuccessful. I think I've, uh, also that your found is, in many senses, what you're proposing is very similar to what uh, uh, to what the EU is proposing now with the recovery and uh, and resilience facility, which basically is 37% of all the investment will be green. Uh, it can be renovation wave, it can be renewable energies, it can be circular economy, whatever. Uh, so I mean, what I want to say is that at global level, if we look at the global picture, there are some wins. Uh, the and uh, and and uh, and uh, the macro the macro trends are going in that that direction, which will for sure help you at local level at some point. No, so as I was saying, 37 percent of all investments will be green. Uh, another part will be on digitalization and skills. So also very important, uh, reskilling and upskilling our workers uh, to adapt to the transformations in the world of work. And the third big pillar will be the welfare, reinforcing our welfare, our welfare systems, our social protection, our well-being. So very much in the same line. And to conclude, beyond uh, giving the floor, before giving the floor to anyone that wants to have a, a final comment or, uh, or, to the, or to the general public that we have with us today, uh, so the key is indeed we share a lot we share a lot and the reality is that to a certain extent we are atomized we have instruments to connect each other uh Reapers international was mentioned gizef that organizing this that organizes this event is also an instrument but we need to structure more unite more because together we can change business and we can change the world most probably we are not the only tool to transform our economies and make them more sustainable and more people centered more human but we are one of the main tools to achieve that goal we don't have the monopole, but the social economy is one of the main tools uh, and a civic movement uh, that is present all around the world to achieve that goal. So with that, I will shut up because I am only the moderator. And if anyone uh, wants, to, I think that we have still, Benjamin will, uh, will correct me, we have still some minutes. So if anyone wants to, I see that Elise wants to say something. So Elise. Merci, je voudrais déjà saluer la participation de tous nos Thank you. I'd like to thank all the panelists for participating. I've learned a great deal. I, I'm reassured, reassured by the conclusions. But 
I would like to launch an appeal to the financial partners that are listening to us because their need for support in implementation of action plans in our country, the sound has gone. These action plans are handicapped by the lack of resources nationwide, uh, particularly in the context of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, because resources have mainly been invested in the health response. So there are challenges. We must meet these challenges. We need to explain, raise awareness. And we need to make everybody understand that SSC adds value to our economy. We need analysis, assessments. This requires the right type of activities so that we can work in the right direction. So thank you for your solidarity. And let's hope that it is translated in the right direction. Thank you very much. Uh, you are absolutely right. I certainly think that there is an opportunity for us to look at the structuring. We need to mobilize private investment. We must mobilize solidarity and cooperation between SSC and all other stakeholders on a global scale. This is certainly true. But there is a great uh, opportunity for the European Commission action plan for SSE next year. It's going to be launched next year. The <clears throat> European Union has realized that there is an opportunity here, and the EU continues to be the number one donor to development in the world. So there is a lot of work being done. There's a great opportunity for us, and I hope that we will be uh, capable of meeting these challenges. There is a huge responsibility across the different sectors for SSE. We're going to work on specific areas. We're going to cooperate with European public authorities. We need to mobilize European Fund for the development of SSE globally, particularly in developing countries. So is, this is an overarching ambition that we all need to meet. We hope that we will be successful, though it will be hard. Obviously, it's easy to make promises, but then to convert words into deeds and actually implementing programs is more difficult. Any more questions or comments before we draw this to a close? Benjamin, could you uh, give me some indications? No questions? Some thoughts have been offered in the chat. From Senegal, we hear that everybody needs to know that there is a global alternative through SSC, that we need synergy and we need a globalization that benefits all. Abelardo from Mexico. has spoken about the need to work as a team and to jointly direct our efforts towards creating laws for SSE and to work together effectively. This would enable us to better manage potential future epidemics, for example. Exclamation mark. That's the thoughts of that particular contributor. So those are the two um, comments that have been made on the chat. And if you are no more questions, no more comments. I think, therefore, that we can draw this meeting to a close. No, basically, I wanted, basically, I wanted to thank everybody for, for this beautiful panel and thank Gisef for the organization.